Hey, good day. My name is Matt Hines. I'm Vice President of Marketing at CypherClad. I'm joined by uh, Madhu Dada. Pleasure to be here, Matt. So we want to keep it moving. Absolutely. Um, uh, starting point in any cloud security journey is to first get visibility. Uh, CypherCloud's CASB platform helps customers to pretty much get visibility into every interaction the user has with the application, right from login to logout. Um, and platform um, helps to get understanding on which user is editing uh, which portlet, etc. So we'll talk a more about uh, the u user activities that we capture when we do the demo. But um, getting visibility is an extremely important uh, starting point. Right, and and point number two here, right? The whole notion of trusted devices on trusted networks has uh, kind of gone out the window, so to speak, as so many of us have been moved um, to the remote environment, right? So now it's you've got you know uh, sitting around your house any uh, number of devices where you might be logging in. Uh, as opposed to traditionally it was company issued laptop on the work network uh, people accessing uh, all over the place with uh, smartphones and the like these days but this is one where it's it's only become more important right Madhu? it's a, it's a big challenge right certainly this is extremely important even for uh, compliance teams um, just to ensure that the application is accessed from right locations there are a lot of compliances around the world which talks about applications being or must be accessed only from certain locations. Um, so CASBs can ensure or help customers to have policy-driven um, um, and adaptive access controls to the application. Uh, so for example, things like, um, hey, I'll allow my devices to access access factors from a managed device. But if the users are accessing from unmanaged device, um, uh, you can have a choice, either you can deny the whole connection or you can um, reduce the permissions of what a user can do. For example, make it a read-only app, um, right? And, and this goes beyond locations and devices. We, um, a lot of customers have asked us, hey, we have uh, different types of user groups, um, our, our company partner users and contractor users, and we want to um, have an ability to um, uh, limit the privileges of what certain user groups can do in success factors and all those uh, help customers and enterprises uh, to have good control access for success factors applications. Right, and it's not just about um, you know uh, blocking potentially bad incidents, it's about enabling people to do their jobs, right, effectively. Right, and, and a big piece of that, number three here, right, um, you know, ensuring that you have the appropriate controls in place uh, to protect and safeguard data, right? You know, activities, right? Upload, download, um, kind of accessing and editing and deleting uh, various files, ensuring that you have the right protections in place, right? Data handling is, of course, uh, the, the lifeblood of a lot of this work, Madhu. Exactly, Matt. Uh, it's all about data, 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 and uh, HXM holds definitely more um, important data. Um, ensuring that the data is protected as it is taken out is extremely important. Uh, challenges business are facing is when uh, the users are taking the data out of the cloud, and these are typically uh, exporting reports or exporting sensitive data and things like those. Um, a lot of customers ask us, uh, we want to put some guardrails, especially when sensitive reports, HR reports are exported, can you do something, right? Um, and and CypherCloud has invested heavily into data protection capabilities in our platform um, uh, using its uh, information rights management technology can uh, ensure that the data is protected everywhere, wherever it travels. When the user downloads the data, it gets encrypted, and that stays encrypted across the life cycle of the file. Um, you know, SAP Success Factors has a huge base in Europe, right? GDPR has become a global standard uh, for uh, privacy and information protection, right? We've seen other areas of the world here in the United States, things like uh, CCPA, the California Consumer Protections Act, are an element of everything um, that, that folks are doing in, the, in SAP Success Factors these days, but Yes. Um, firstly, I think Success Factors did an amazing job in, in um, building GDPR capabilities into the platform. Uh, so customers can um, uh, leverage Success Factors GDPR features, um, right? Where CASBs or third-party security vendors like CypherCloud are adding value to this is 
Um, the CASB service itself uh, can be geographically distributed, and we have seen a lot of customers expressing interest that, um, hey, we, have a, we are a geographically distributed company. Uh, however, we want to make sure the, the activity, visible logs, etc., are only staying in uh, certain jurisdictions, right? Um, um, just to make sure that the, not just the SAP data itself is uh, compliant with GDPR, but also the CASB service is compliant with GDPR. Um, so those things are possible, and this basically makes the entire solution uh, to to be GDPR compliant. Moving quickly here as we uh, get through the tips, right? Encryption, right? We've talked about uh, data protection. You talk about about compliance, and encryption is a key piece of that, right? Being able to um, protect data um, both inside of the app and as it travels across and uh, potentially out of the app. Uh, you know, having the right controls in place. Certainly, that's a big element of GDPR. Uh, from a Cypher Cloud perspective, this is an area of strength of our, of our capability as recognized by folks like Gartner, differentiated from a lot of the other products on the market today. Marty, what are you hearing from folks in terms of um, you know, pain points or challenges around encryption and SAP success factors? Yeah, um, success factors have um, built a lot of security capabilities on the data, as, as we all know, Matt. Um, success factors encrypts the data at rest on, on its file storages, and um, um, platform also has announced some capabilities around uh, allowing customers to manage the keys um, as well. And and no conversation again, uh, much like compliance, no conversation would be complete uh, without uh, touching on uh, threats. Absolutely, man. Um, yeah. I think security is all about uh, detecting threats and preventing threats. Um, and uh, CypherCloud's CASB is, uh, shines in this area uh, because uh, the platform captures so much of activities regarding a user, uh, uh, and the user is um, uh, followed right from login to logout, and every activity is monitored, right? So with that kind of information, uh, leveraging our uh, machine learning-based uh, behavior analytics threat intelligence engine, uh, every user is basically profiled um, based on the activities that the user is performing um, and grouped into different categories. And uh, this helps enterprises to gain full visibility and understanding into uh, different threats that are emerging out there. So uh, enterprises definitely express interest to gain visibility into uh, threats from both sides, external and internal. Um, and the platform will help enterprises detect those things. And unfortunately, you know, events are going to happen, right? Uh, even the ideal scenario, even with all the great capabilities that SAP Success Factors has on board, um, even if you're using uh, additional controls like the CASB, uh, things are going to happen. Uh, yes, man. We actually have built um, a lot of capabilities around this uh, area. Again, it's extremely important for businesses to be able to know and um, uh, where and how the threat uh, started and uh, um, so we have some tools in the platform with uh, some simple clicks of buttons. Uh, enterprises can search uh, across the activity logs and uh, do some investigation and go back in time to understand exactly how the threat uh, uh, happened. More and more customers use this to achieve cloud governance. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about uh, three use cases um, that we uh, discussed earlier. Um, first, about uh, how to gain full visibility into user activities um, across all success factors. Um, just like you know, Cypher Cloud can help customers gain across all success factors modules like uh, uh, employee central goals and uh, performance, recruiting jam, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, so let's see the demo in action. So logged into the platform. Um, so with all the logs that get collected uh, through the platform, uh, uh, we present dashboards to customers. So customers can get full visibility into how the users are logged into success factors, from which uh, endpoints in the login, um, and how many of them are uh, success versus failure. And um, uh, it's not just about the endpoints and the locations, but it's also about the uh, user activities that are performed during the session. So some of the user activities like uh, the content uh, uploads, content downloads, any edits to any portlets, especially as we talked about the bank account information portlet or any portlet of your choice, 
uh, right uh, platform helps to get deep visibility into those um, plus another important area is report exports um, um, any reports that are exported from success factors uh, can be uh, visualized as well right um, and uh, so a lot of activities in terms of uh, what are being monitored and measured okay um, the second use case I want to talk about is uh, how we can actually secure access to success factors and off late, uh, a lot of identity management vendors have um, uh, introduced capabilities around um, how you to secure access based on the users and user groups. Uh, but what differentiates CypherCloud SCASB is um, with the amount of data and that gets collected, um, and uh, we run it through the threat intelligence and uh, help customers to derive uh, user risks. And customers can set secure access policies based on the device risk or the threat intelligence based risks. Um, so here I have, um, uh, let me log into the console. Here I have two users. Um, so there are actually, every user as you see here is profiled into different risk zone based on the number of violations. So two users here, uh, P. Wilson and uh, uh, J. Williams. Uh, P. Wilson is a high-risk user, and J. Williams is a low-risk user, right? So let's see how, when both of these users try to access uh, success factors, um, their experience will be, right? Um, let me log in first. So I'll first log in as J. Williams, and uh, he's a low-risk low user. So after uh, IDP authentication, the user um, signs into success factor. So no issue, because this user is a... Uh, a low risk user based on the policies, uh, we allowed him access to success factors, right? But let's see what happens when uh, P. Wilson tries to join, uh, right? And, and uh, he's a high risk user uh, because there are a ton of violations that happen on this, uh, this user performs. So just based on the riskiness of the user and based on simple policies, uh, the access to this user is denied. And this is just one remediation control. Customers can set up uh, multiple remediation controls like you can uh, challenge the user to provide MFA um, or to um, allow the user, but park it and audit it and things like those. So a lot of remediation controls often. Um, and these pages, again, can be customized based on enterprises, uh, templates, uh, uh, the look and feel of these messages can be customized. Okay. So that's how you can ensure that um, the access to success factors can be checked uh, to make sure that right people are gaining access uh, to the application based on uh, device postures, location checks, and user risks, and more. The third use case I want to talk about is uh, how we can um, help uh, data exfiltration kind of scenarios. So uh, this is something that a lot of our customers expressed uh, significant interest upon. Um, and um, naturally, in success factors, reporting is a significantly important module, and there's so much of sensitive data that's out there. Um, so let me try to go into reporting uh, module and uh, try to extract and download a report, right? So I'm in my report center, and I have one report called All Employees. Let me run it. So as you see here, uh, in one report, there's so much of PII data that I can see the employees' names, email addresses, addresses, date of birth, nationalities, et cetera, very high value data, right? And a lot of customers ask us, um, when employees are downloading this report, um, can you do something around um, ensuring that this report is encrypted uh, so that it doesn't get into the wrong hands? Um, yes, and let's see that in experience, uh, right? So as a user, I'm trying to download this report uh, in, in an Excel format. And immediately, uh, the user is presented with a message. So enterprises, uh, take the opportunity to coach your users um, upon any sensitive data uh, downloads, right? Uh, so in this case, enterprises can feed in a message telling, hey, dear user, you're trying to download something uh, sensitive. Um, and this can be... Uh, uh, policy driven again uh, that comes up only when certain sensitive information is being downloaded, not for all, right? And uh, take the opportunity 
And um, once a synthesis is sent to information, you can actually set up policies to step up the authentication of the user and uh, um, ask the user for additional security questions. And, and CypherCloud platform uh, integrates with multiple MFA vendors and IDP vendors. So you can take advantage of your existing investments into those platforms. Um, so once the user answers uh, the question, uh, the file gets downloaded. And if you notice, um, after the download, the file is in encrypted form. So the idea here is a lot of customers tell, um, uh, I want to make sure that high value sensitive reports are encrypted, even when they're on devices, right? Uh, so the data itself is pretty secure on the cloud, uh, but uh, what if the report is downloaded to devices and that is being spread across in um, uh, either USB sticks or mail mails or uh, personal shares, etc. Um, so customers express interest to encrypt the data and uh, be able to open the data only for authorized users, right? Um, so uh, let me show you an example of how an authorized user will be able to open the file. Right, so here I'm, I'm trying to let me open the file. When the user tries to open the file, a uh, user will be challenged for authentication. So um, again, this uh, I'll enter my credentials, J. Williams in this case. And the platform takes the user to the same IDP portal. So the um, idea here is to leverage all your existing security investments. Um, right, so in this case, we are tying into the IDP, Okta. So the user uh, enters the credentials, um, the same standard enterprise credentials, uh, no duplication of uh, identity here. And once the user enters the credentials and is authenticated, platform authorizes the user to open the file. And that's it. Once the user is checked, if it is the right user, um, user can open the file. But if the credentials are not authentic or if the authentication fails and authorization fails, the user will not be able to open the file. That's one way how enterprises can ensure that any report exports are protected end to end. Um, uh, so I also want to show you, um, and customers ask us, uh, okay, uh, fine, the file got downloaded, but what if the employee uh, is taking that file or leaving, has left the organization and he has access to that file already? Uh, so the platform helps enterprises uh, to revoke access uh, based on policies, again. So here is one policy which I've authored to tell uh, revoke access to uh, J. Williams. So I'm just turning on the policy. Um, and let's see how when the same user tries to open the file now, uh, what the experience will be. So when the user tries to open, because we have enabled that policy, um, the user will not be able to open the file anymore. So it's very powerful. Uh, um, a lot of customers um, use this feature um, by encrypting the data and be able to revoke access to sensitive data reports based on policies. And these policies can be set again based on the user group or location or device postures um, um, or a specific individual user and many more parameters. So with that, thanks very um, much. Yeah, I want to hand it off Sorry. to you. Yeah, no, thanks very much, Madhu. Uh, yeah, just to emphasize, that's really just a snapshot, right, of the uh, uh, Casby Plus capabilities. Uh, you know, when we talk about um, the Casby platform uh, in general, right? Uh, you know, the story is one of uh, broad-based capabilities, right? Uh, calling that data protection here, but just an idea of all the various areas, many of which we've touched on today. Um, you know, from a CASB uh, capabilities perspective. And uh, again, um, I think that's it for now. Thanks again, Madhu. Thanks, Matt.